What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, my man, Eric Sheet Tabor. We are going to be breaking down tonight's five game slate for Thursday. Um, had a good night on FanDuel last night. I had a, made a little run in the monster late. I didn't, unfortunately, the Jason, T I, I ended up with stuck with Jason Tatum because of all the value that opened up. And then I had to play Roby with no Shea at 3,900, which was awesome. But I had literally the nuts in every single spot. And I had, I just had the money left over for, for, for any one, two V two, which I could have done better than Tatum and Westbrook. Um, but it was uh, what I got stuck with in, in the nuts, basically in every other position. So it ended up fizzling out in 16th, but it, but it definitely made a little bit of a run and a little bit of a better game of, you know, closer game in Utah. Maybe I went in and I was down, I think 15 points by the end from first, which would have been a nice one, but uh good night overall. Um, Sheets, I'll ask you about your night, but real quickly, I thought we would talk just briefly about, <clears throat> look, we, we have Saberson now on our site. You can get it on our site for basically. Let's go, let's go back. To, let's go actually. Let's go back to the actual to the home page actually. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. It's the home page. Uh, yeah. Let me go to the home page. We're gonna go through this really simply. You can go to Saber Sim through tools. Through you can go through it through this link. We're gonna have more links. It'll be pl plastered throughout the the pages just so you guys can get to it easily. But this what what happens every day basically. What I want to focus on is that I'm gonna set my core, and my core might be a number of players. It might it might end up being like 14, 15 players depending on how many lineups I'm throwing out there. It might be as little as four or five on certain days, but they're the guys who I'm going to be using in my lineups that we talk about all the time. A uh, roadie will have, have his up there and sheets will have, you know, you know, probably a sm smaller number for sheets. I'll show you just like for his example, let's just say that I liked Jokic and drew holiday. I'm like setting my core right now. And then over the bottom, bottom, bottom that the little camera. And then we can go to the camera. We're going to save this. We're going to save core players. And we're going to save it as a uh, sheets test or whatever sheets yep. test. And we'll just put sheets. I would hit save and you'll see a thing on your side. That'll set have a column for sheets core. So, and they'll all be, you know, like a lot of the other sites have, and we'll have one with, a, with each of us will have a column like sheets core. If I feel like putting fades in there, I'll put that as well. And Bobby will have it too. And, uh, uh, Rody as well. And, and one thing I did want to mention for those of you using Sabersim, um, who already have both, we, we, you know, uh, I'm sorry, who, who don't have Sabersim yet, but, uh, but, but are interested in getting it through our site, but already have a subscription to us. No problem. It's not a difficulty to, to, to smooth over to all you have to do is get the Sabersim package and we prorate the account and, and cuts off, you know, you're, you won't be paying the difference any, you'll, you'll just be paying the difference basically. Um, the, the other thing I hate to, I hate to, the other thing I hate to oversell. I hate to like, over describe if it's not even effective yet because I guess it's not even implemented yet. But the idea is that you're going to be able to get both like the true DFS projections in one column, yeah, and then the the Saberson projections in another. It's not they're not there now, but um, a a I don't think they are. No, no, um, you're, no. Your projections, your projections, and Saberson projections are there. There's your, these are my projections. These are Saberson projections. They're very similar, as you can tell at the moment. No, uh, they're exactly the same. Mine are not up there because we didn't oh. upload them yet. I guess. Oh, right? Okay. Well, once you upload yours automatically, yours will be there. Well, because I uploaded those to the site, but but we have to on our side also upload them to 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 to, to Saberson. It does. It it does it automatically. We we have the back end stuff set up, so it does every day. Okay. It'll, it'll have your your it'll have your project she just project well, i just wonder because right now these are not my projections that are on the side okay because it's it, then 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 we'll we'll double check that but uh okay. again this is we're at the very early stages so work with us as we go through the kings that's why i said i didn't want to oversell this. yeah yeah we, we, are, we are really we are really on you know we have a, a, a great setup with, with saber sim it's it's not that much more to use ours as along with theirs but we want you know we're, we're not trying to take anybody away from saber sim we want to just fo focus on the fact that we're you know we're charging a similar price that saber sim charges for their product and you're getting our stuff as well. And I think that there's something really valuable if you try and combine those processes. Sheets has made a, a lot of money doing this. A lot of our users have made money doing this with already the, the accounts. And now it's uh, barely going to cost you any more than it would for a normal uh, Saber Sim account or an account for any other uh, optimi optimizer out there. But from my experience, from what I've been looking at so far with Saber Sim, I actually really prefer Saber Sim to the other sites. And I just have to figure out how to use it a little bit better before we do the tutorials, and all, tutorials and all that. Well, so what, that, I was, what I was going to say is that you're going to, you're going to eventually see three different columns. You'll see one for Saberson numbers, one for true DFSs, mm -hmm. and then you'll get an average one also, like if you yes. wanted to average the two of them, and then right. you'll have a, my projection where you could like tweak it on your own and stuff like that. Yep. Um, I don't think this view is is, is exactly what they're going to see. I think that's I think that's probably the yeah issue. yeah. But, but we're just giving you an idea. This is what we're where we're at right okay. now. And and but it is it is all. It, I mean the, the the core plays are up there. 
she says things are up there. I'll double check with Evan. Uh, I'm sorry, with Mark after the call, but uh, yours yours should be up there for the for the projections as well. We just have to uh, to make sure that everything is is linked up right on the back end, and we're good to go. And 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 we'll you know we can't show it because not everybody's using Saber Sim, so we can't give away their projections. So we can't use it for every video, but we wanted to show you just like a little bit of you know what we have to offer now, and uh, we're still continuing to grow and improve. So any other thoughts, please enter it in the True DFS support channel, and we can help you out. And uh, with that stuff out of the way, let's get into the slate. And Sheets, how did how did you do last night? And what are your thoughts early on this slate? So I was I was listening. You, you guys would be proud of me. I was a good boy. I usually say, you know, I'm going into the city. I don't have time to look, and I'm really not going to play. They end up playing freaking thirty lineups anyway. Twenty of them end up being dead because I don't look at the freaking uh, late news because I, you know, because I don't have time. And instead of not playing, which I'm supposed to, but yesterday I said I was going to only play one lineup, and I did only play one lineup. But even playing one lineup, guys, really, it's it, you got to stay on top of everything. Like Bobby, you just now told me, oh, there was late news that I, I still don't even know what he's talking about. Like that's how bad I was last night. I don't even know what late news he's referring to when when he says, oh, the late news that came in on Tatum. I don't know. Did, I, no, I didn't. I didn't say late news came in on Tatum. I said late news that came in before lock that that forced us. Oh, into, that okay. So maybe I'm having to spend all of our money. But 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 my but my point was that even still, like I got back even from the city, and there were still decisions to be made, you know, uh, in, in my lineups. But what I was going to say is that that if you are used to just using optimizers, be careful when you hand build that you're not doing stupid stuff. Because one of the things that's good about optimizers, they make your life easy. But but one of the things that's bad about them is that when you take that away then the stuff that was easy, now all of a sudden you might think is being done for you, which you which is just not, you know? Like, and here's an example. So last night I played one lineup. I didn't build it with an optimizer. I built it by hand. So I picked, I like this guy, I like this guy, I like this guy, I like this with this. Okay, let's go. And then I came back and I said, okay, I have two two things I have to swap later. And I realized I didn't even freaking put the, the, the late game guy in the utility spot. I mean, you know, because I'm so used to it's such an, an obvious thing to do. And that's the first thing that you you enter into any optimizer program is the is is the way is that you have to do that. Like when Evan did his, I'm like, you got to put that in there. So I just always assume that whatever lineups I'm putting in are going to have that. But because I did it by hand, I just forgot. So I'm sitting there with freaking Davion Mitchell in the freaking utility spot with his <laughs> with his points already gone. And now I'm like, OK, so now I got Westbrook in the freaking point guard. I'm like. Oh no, I can't even switch. So I can't even swap through utility guy if I wanted to. If Mitchell were in there, I could have maybe done something. But so just, just NBA is hard. And even when you think it's easy, it's hard. So just make sure that you do the stupid little easy things to make your life easy. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It was one of those weird nights. I mean, some of my favorite plays didn't do much, but, but like I even Booker has had a terrible game and still like five X. It was like one of those weird nights where you really needed like you could really pay up all the different ways. I probably should have been a little heavier on the Kyrie Durant thing. I was actually ended up pretty high on Durant, but um, you know, it's tough to play those guys together and, and the, the people who did it, it paid off for them. And there were so many ways to win last night. You could even won lineup tournaments without them. So um, with that said, let's get, let's, let's get into the, to the slate tonight. I think we've got a, an actually a, a really good one. Um, it's, I mean, a really good for a five gamer because it isn't as obvious what to do with our value. It's not as obvious to do, you know, it's the same, it's the, basically the Washington situation we always get. And then we have the Milwaukee situation with their, with their side of things with no Giannis. So it's, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Giannis is in tonight. I don't know why I had Giannis. You just, you just almost gave me a freaking headache. I, I'm I, sitting I, there I, I'm I, like, <laughs> for some reason, I, the first thing I saw when I woke up this morning, I thought I said, I thought I saw that Giannis was out and Giannis has been ruled out. Let, let, me, let me tell Giannis, you what I said. By, by the way, Giannis is out. Giannis is out. But it was only four minutes ago that it happened, so I don't know how I actually caught that. I think we how must did you know that. that then? Yeah. Uh, oh, you know what it was? It was a Saberson page when we were looking at over pre-show, and it had them as out. Very quick so, updated, those guys are. So what this means, by the way, uh, we'll, we can take a slate view if you want. What this means is, is that is that Jokic is now going to be probably a billion percent off. Yes. Um, because I just presuming you're going to be able to get to him in very easy fashion now with the Milwaukee guys out. Um, I'm just guessing. Um, uh, but I guess we could go game by game and now we'll just have to, I'll just have to ignore the Milwaukee because I was all so funny because the other value I had on the board was, was actually Washington, I think. So it's going to be a, a good game could be a fun one, I guess. It'd be a fun one if it stays close. And, and I think it would, I mean, I even look at the spread, I actually was wondering just when I was looking at it right now, I was like, it said I had Giannis is in. I was like, are they, you know, cause I, I don't know. It just, it tripped me out a little bit, but uh, well, let's get into it. Let's get into the first game. What are your thoughts here? And 
we'll get into that to that game probably. Let's let's get into the to, the, to that that game last so we can let all the projections Ooh, update. Cleve, oh, not see now. DraftKings is being a little nasty. Ninety seven hundred on Garland. I yep. mean, ouch! <laughs> it's yep. like, life ain't so easy anymore. Not that it was easy. It was already a struggle to play him in ninety two hundred, but we did it because we you know he's had the ceiling. Ninety seven hundred is asking for trouble. I don't know. Yeah. Um, Certainly looks like, uh, again, we're going to start with this, right? So right now, he's the best play. We haven't looked at a single other team yet, right? Um, so right now, I do like Garland. I don't like um, much any other value on Cleveland. Uh, on the Toronto side, um, yep, Van Vliet and Siakam, both under 9K. Matchup isn't great, but, you know, they're going to play 8 million minutes, so that looks good. So, yeah, so so Garland, oh. I have to say, I have to think that Siakam and Van Vliet would be better, better, better plays just because they're cheaper. But Garland's been just the whole, I guess the whole team. I don't know. Um, I guess you could play Van Vliet with Garland. Can you really do that in 9,700? I'll leave that. I'll leave that question. Oh yeah. absolutely. 9,700 shouldn't even be sticker shock for Garland, especially on this slate. Um, the guys, you know, I mean, every it's his bad games. He puts up 40 something, his good games. He puts up 60, and it's basically like there's been, you know, I think he's at between 38 and 66 every game for a million years now, basically in the current situation that they've been playing under without all the other guy, guards there and everything. And not even the backup guards to take away any love from him, like Rajon Rondo and all that stuff, which just boosts him even more. The only thing is with Levert in the lineup, it does feel like, OK, well, we're going to have to put Garland on the list, but we're going to have to see how he ranks compared to these other guys by the end of the slate. And I don't really have any way of, of having too much interest in Cleveland other than him. I do think Evan Mobley is always going to have like some, a, an occasional game. And so is Kevin Love. I just don't necessarily think this is the best matchup. And I, it's, it's always hard to predict those guys, but the Toronto side that I'm more interested in um, Van Fleet and Siakam are, are both fine. I have them both as completely okay plays, but we're going to talk about Drew holiday and, and, and the Milwaukee madness in, the, in a little bit. So it's hard to, to really want to pri prioritize these guys over that in a bad matchup. Um, the guys who I would lean on would be Boucher and, and Precious. I don't know. Uh, I guess if I had to prefer which one, I think Precious is safer, and I think Boucher has more upside. That's what I've got currently as my, my heaviest level of interest. And it's probably worth noting that Ken Birch the other night did play his 30 minutes finally. We, fi we finally got minutes out of Ken Birch, and he put up 27 fantasy points. He's 3,300. So Birch, Achua, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Birch, Boucher, and Achua, one of those guys, probably not more than one because they do cross over a little bit, but they will play a little bit together. But anyway, I think those are your main plays on Toronto for me. And uh, for the next one, we'll, we'll, we'll get into to Indy and Memphis. Sheets, do you want to start that one off? I want to talk about this a little bit. Um, I want to talk about Indiana last night. Um, so I, I uh, the last thing I said in Discord uh, when I went in, uh, whatever, so with Brogdon out, I mean, I think Halliburton and Heal both play really, really strong plays. And I saw that you played uh, Pitace. So, I, I mean, we played we were, Pitace and I played, I played Halliburton in one of my three on DraftKings, and I had him in every lineup on FanDuel. Yeah, so we were all we were on the same page there. Yeah. And this is what I wanted to bring up. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a Rick Carlisle rant, like sort of. So I've, I've gotten in, in, involved back uh, after a couple of years off and doing some AAU stuff. I'm not, you know, they're not my sons, not my teams, but I did do some assistant stuff, do some analytics. I help with some of the practices and stuff. And just some basic coaching stuff. So I've gotten back into it a little bit. Let me tell you, I don't know, I don't know if you saw the end of the Indiana game yesterday, but 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 this is what you this is what you're supposed to do in basketball, right? If you're 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 up one with the ball with about yeah, about 20 seconds to go. Okay. So you're gonna get the ball in and they're gonna probably try to foul you, right? So what you're supposed to do is get the ball to your best ball handler, encourage them to trap and get it to your best shooter, and then they get the free throws. This way, you kill 8, 10 seconds, and you get your best free throw shooter with the ball. Yep. What Indiana decided to do uh, is, is not get Tyrese Halliburton the ball, all right? They just inbounded the ball to freaking Buddy Heald in the backcourt. Buddy Heald basically, with the, with the tiniest little bit of pressure, literally just dribbled the ball out of bounds in the backcourt. <laughs> Bring the ball over to Sacramento, and then you see Buddy Heald like, on the bench, like at the timeout, he's like, oh, my God, what the hell did I do? And I'm like, oh, please punish them for this. And they did. Sacramento did win at the end. Okay. Um, so I just want to, I just wanted to give my little Rick Carlisle rant. Now, with that said, uh, I is is Brogdon already ruled out for tonight? 
No, so who knows? Uh, let's see what it says here. It says, I don't even have this questionable. It says he has been rolled up for Wednesday. Doesn't even have a questionable tag. Yeah, he has, he's not on the injury report right now, but. So I, right now, still like actually um, maybe a little bit tase uh, at, at, um, at, uh, at 4,900. But aside from that, I don't really have too much if Brogdon is from, and from Indiana. Uh, and on Memphis, uh, is I, I presume that, that um, I'll be able to tell from the projections if he's in. Um, actually, I can't tell. Is Morant in? From the projections? You can't, you don't see Morant's name? He is, but he's projected for like, for like nothing. I think he's, he's, he's like a chance to not play it. I have no idea. He's questionable, but you, you should remember that Morant's numbers have dropped off dramatically for, and there's nothing he's doing wrong with this. It's just they now have all these other bodies back that they didn't have early in the year, like Dylan Brooks, like Kyle Anderson, just yeah. secondary ball handlers who can who can also score where he doesn't have to take the whole the whole load himself. This team is loaded in depth, um, but he was playing with Zaire Williams starting before as opposed to Dylan Brooks. Now you're going to get twice as much use of out of, you know what I mean? Everything to slants away from Morant in that situation. It doesn't mean he doesn't still have the ceiling, just means it's a lot harder for him to get there. Yeah, I think the game is a lemon. I don't know. I don't really like much. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard because you have a really bad defense that plays fast in Indiana. You have a really, and actually a decent defense, but they play lightning quick in, in Memphis. It, this game feels like a blowout because they both played last night. Indiana's terrible and, and Memphis is excellent. Um, and Memphis did, you know, one of my bets of the day was, was that, that Memphis game yesterday. I did like Memphis to beat Brooklyn. Um, I, I think that Memphis probably handles them here, but if, you know, I, again, I, I still think there's defense plays to be had. I think the main thing to focus on are the bigs for for Indy because they tend to like to play these guys. Um, we don't know who's playing yet, but what, if Smith is out and Duarte's out again, another thing that, uh, you know, I, we're going to play some Terry Taylor, I think. Um, I think that Justin Anderson, if he's back in the starting lineup, which I don't think he would be because it was brought because Brogdon was out but they didn't necessarily, they don't always start Batatze either. And you never know if they'll play Batatze on the back-to-back. -back. It's really hard to project this early in the day, but I have right now as my priority in this game is Indiana Biggs. Um, so whoever that is who's playing, whether it's Jalen Smith, whether it's O'Shea Brissett, whether it's uh, Taylor and Batatze, if, if any one of those guys or two of them are out, uh, if any one are out along with Duarte, I'm probably going to be playing one of them. It's just hard to know right now who it's going to be and who's in the starting lineup. And without knowing that, it's going to be hard to assess. But I do think an indie big is the way is my favorite way to go, assuming that all the guards play. Um, maybe you get the weird Justin Anderson play if you get three guys sitting or something like that at minimum cost. But it's not my, you know, my favorite. I like it better on a five game slate than I do on a 15. But he's I mean, Justin Anderson is an interesting case because it's like for so long, we're so used to this guy failing us. But even when he plays a terrible game, like yesterday, he played 31 minutes, he put up 20 fantasy points. The game before, he played 36 minutes, put up 34 fantasy points, and he's 3K. So it's worth note. It's just worth mentioning. You mean, um, you mean Kyle Anderson, right? No, I mean Justin Anderson. Who is he? On Indiana. The Indiana guy. Okay. Yeah, he's um, but he but he's but he but he plays if Duarte. He played because oh, okay. Duarte and Brogdon sat, but the, the game before Brogdon didn't sit, I believe, and he played. It just 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 keep an eye out for it. Um. So that, that's all I have to say about that one. And then on the Memphis side, it really is hard when all these guys are healthy to, to find a play that we really feel comfortable. Dylan Brooks on a back-to-back -back off of the injury and not playing most of the year, hard to imagine they're going to give him all the run he wants here. The usage is awesome. I mean, literally his usage at like the last five games has been over, has been like elite level usage for a guy who's 5,700. Desmond Bain is a great player. I never mind him. Um, I just can't find anybody that I really want. So I'm going to skip that for now. And I think we should move past the Milwaukee Washington game and then close with that game. Well, can I, have a, can I ask you a question again? Cause I wasn't there for the live thing. And, and so again, I, I stopped looking at basketball at like two o'clock yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Did, did, when, when Brogdon was ruled out, did, did, um, did Justin Anderson become popular or no? He did. The thing is he couldn't really be that popular. I think he ended up like six or 7% because he, there was just too much value on the slate. But there were guys in our Discord who were adamant that Justin Anderson was their favorite value, and other people felt it. I think I threw him in because one it seems that life. that he would be. You know what I mean? Like because people are very we used to see guys. It seems they played thirty six minutes the game before and scored thirty four fantasy points. You think that people would play him, right? Or at least 
Oh, I should. Oh, no. I mean, I don't know. Well, there, I mean, there was literally 70 guys like that last night. We could have oh, made, okay. you could have just picked between all the value, which is why I ended up playing Batatse, by the way. I okay. just realized, oh, no one's going to do this because of his, his pre a lot of times, and, and I, I get, no, it's not a big slate, but a good strategy to use when there's extra value on a slate is to try to jump up tiers in value, play the 4k ish, play the 5k ish guys, because there's, those guys are getting the, the, like the same kind of bumps and they're more legitimate. They're, they're, they're safer for the most part. But it also that you, you're you're going to be differentiating your lineup just by playing that value rather than the ultra thin value, which is what most people do. So let's let's move over to Chicago and New Orleans before we get to we want to wait. Oh, on you'd the, rather do you rather do it that way? Okay. Yeah, because I just want to wait for the projections to update, and it's 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 just going to be interesting to see what happens. <laughs> um, all right, uh, Chicago. We've got a big Q tag on the uh, Demar Derozan. Chicago has been absolutely dreadful. Uh, I, I can I, I'll give away one of my bets of the day, and and. Look, it's going to be wrong sometimes, but like I think New Orleans, I mean, Chicago like should be a, a massive underdog in every slate the way that they're playing. Um, Sheets, what are you doing in this game? Because I feel like I've got a lot of mixed feelings on what I want to do outside of I definitely want some exposure to McCollum. Yeah, I would go back to Caruso again. Um, uh, he, I mean, again, it depends where value shakes up. And now with all this probably Milwaukee value that everybody else becomes weaker. You know, I would imagine, but we'll look at that in a minute. Um, but I currently have Caruso rated as a pretty good play. Uh, and obviously, if DeRozan is out, then, I mean, then it's only Ole Enfrey, <laughs> like Levine and Vooch, I suppose. Um, but I still actually think DeRozan looks like, like, again, he looks like a reasonable play, but he hadn't done anything, you know? <laughs> um, Levine looks like a reasonable play, and Vooch looks like a reasonable play. Um so I guess I would leave it at that. And if one of them is out, obviously the other ones get bumped. Um, and New Orleans, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I, I like McCollum. Uh, I like him uh, quite a bit. Uh, and pretty much that's it. Okay, yeah. So I, I, I like um, – hmm. I, I do want to play. It's a good pace matchup, no matter what. I, the, the, here's the thing I'm just going to mention about Caruso. I'll just go on a really quick little tin tangent or whatever. Uh, he's projected like this every night. And it's weird when a guy is projected for a score that he hasn't hit in what? Right. Three months. Right. Um, and it's every night. So we're just going to have to keep dealing with it. I, I, I on paper on in logic, if the game stays close, he should be a good play, but is he really that great of a play? Like, I mean, like he's a low usage. I love, I love Caruso for real life basketball, but I think he gets overplayed in DFS because people love him. And he's on every meme. He's on everybody's Twitter handle. Every, he's like everybody's favorite player. He's probably the most uh, beloved NBA player across all, all avenues because no one dislikes him. And, and, and he's, and he's earned a reputation and he looks like awesome. So he gets all the love. Um, but I'm just going to say that it's, 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 it's a lot thinner of a play than people are, are playing it as if it is. And I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that I have no interest in him tonight. I'm, I'm open to playing him. It's a good situation, but we're, we're talking about a guy who really is never getting there as basically being chalk all the time. And I just think we got to be a little bit careful with that. Um, I like McCollum and I like Valanchunas on the other side. Uh, those would be my, my preferred plays. If you're, you know, it's a weird four game slate. So maybe playing an Alvarado at low ownership is, is, is viable. Maybe playing Jackson Hayes at low ownership is viable. Those guys are on my list. I just don't think anybody's a priority outside of McCollum. Um, Denver Phoenix. There's one thing I wanted to draw your attention to. It just requires, it'll be requiring some, you know, I guess some attention is that Chris Paul is a Q tag now um, with, with commentary that, that he, is going to return sooner than people thought. Um, and I, I, this is from the DraftKings app too. There was speculation he might actually play yesterday, but he didn't. Um, so just that's something to keep in mind. Um, uh, now, with that said, uh, this is, you can rewind this to, to yesterday, the day before, the day before, the day before, and the day before that. With Chris Paul out, Devin Booker's under 10K. I'm going to play him. Mm -hmm. um, he uh, had eight fantasy points at the end of the first half and still got five X as you were saying. Right? Yep. Just too much, just has the ball too often, too much usage spreads probably close. You know what I mean? Like it's just, you, you, uh, you just want that. If they announce that Chris Paul is, I mean, I don't even want to speculate, but if they announce Chris Paul is playing, I'm just, I, is he the guy, by the way, Chris Paul, that would, would 
that would play and not play a full run? Or is he the guy that's like, if he's either going to play or he's not going to play? Because I know you sometimes say about Kevin Durant, like he's not going to come in and play 26 minutes. He's either going to play or he's not going to play. Is yeah, Chris I, Paul that type of guy or no? I think it's more likely he's in a 30-minute range when he comes back as opposed to the 34 minutes. You know what I mean? Something like that. I don't think it's going to be like a much of a shortened thing. But I don't okay. think – I mean, as of right now, it would be shocking to be – the only reason they would do it is because Phoenix is on a back-to-back with travel to Denver um, maybe. But it seems like a better spot to just like let's let him have like an extra couple days and not have his first game be in – mile high altitudes for you know what I mean like it just doesn't that's make hard. sense yeah that's a good idea so that that would be what I would think and, and assuming that is the case I think you're going to get a lower than should be on Devin Booker I don't like look guys if you want something encouraging about Devin Booker from last night it's that he really played um, more passively because DeAndre Ayton just absolutely destroyed Cat like I mean he literally just massacred him the whole game and I was surprised a little bit how, how easily he did that but he didn't do much and he only took 15 shots he did take a bunch of free throws he had 28 real life points and 43 fantasy points on what was a really poor game for him in terms of it was his lowest usage game without Chris Paul. I mean, it was everything. And he still basically almost got there and he has a better matchup even tonight. So I I'm, I'm in, I mean, or it was a good one last night, but it's a really good one tonight. Um, I I'm into Devin Booker big time. I think that he Garland and McCollum are the guys who, you know, of the guys we've talked about that we, that were, that we're focusing on, right? Like, and I think that you're deciding between probably those guys. I have Booker as my number one with a Booker and, and McCall and, and Garland. I have as one and one a, but I, I don't mind if you want to try and play all three of those guys and maybe you can then try to ha- find a way to skip the hundred percent on Jokic. That was, that was, that was my, that was my, that was my, my, my thing last night. I played all three nine K uh, guards. I played uh, Westbrook and, and, uh, and Halliburton and, uh, and Booker. I liked it. You know what I mean? It just didn't work. You know, it didn't work. It, but I, but I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and then, uh, uh, you know, on the, on the Denver side, how are we not like, like, honestly, it's, it's going to become to the point where it's like Jokic is being projected, you know, even after they update Giannis, it's going to be, it can't be too high. <laughs> That's all I can tell you right now. Um, it, can't, I mean, it can't be too low. It's just what, what I mean, the price is too low. He's going to smash. He always does. Uh, maybe you could argue it's a little tough. I don't even know. I'm, I don't know how to fade him outside of doing the 3 9K guy thing. And even that feels kind of kind of rough. Uh, we do have the, you know, the, the Will Barton price has gone down to 4,200 on FanDuel. I know he wasn't great to us the other night, but at 4,200, it's just a guy I'm probably going to, going to, going to probably plug in over there. Like it just doesn't make sense for him to be quite that low, even though he, the recency has sort of gone away from him. And look, everybody made fun of the Aaron Gordon thing the other night, Aaron Gordon put up 36 fantasy points. He's 5k and 4,900. He's in play for sure. Um, this is a big gate like Phoenix. This is a, you know, this is a team that has knocked them out of the playoffs before. This is the the team, the defending Western Conference champs. This is the kind of game, and Denver needs to stay out of that that bottom spot. So they're gonna, I think they're gonna play these guys. I think there's upside for every Denver player on their minutes. Um, so just just for what for whatever that's worth, you're gonna think Barton might play more like 34, 36. I think Jokic might play 38, and I think that uh, Aaron Gordon might end up with 32, 34, and all of those things creep them up enough to where they become really good plays if you just change their minute projection, which is what I did this morning. Because I do think they're going to get a lot of run. And the one weird guy here who maybe we don't need because we don't need the value. And it's always a, a, a wild ride. But look, Jeff Green is, is playing minutes. He's 3,400. He's the other one I think could get an uptick in minutes here. But I don't think I'm, I don't think we need to do that. And Monte Morris sort of fits a similar category. All of the, I'm interested in all of these, these, these uh, Denver guys. But they just – the Morris, the, the – what's it called? The Morris and the Jeff Green just rate as meh. But I do like Jokic, Gordon, and Barton. Um, not all together necessarily, but, but I do think you can even play two of them and then run it back with, uh, 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 what's it called? A, uh, 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 Devin Booker. What I wouldn't probably do is play Aiton off of a ceiling performance. I mean, he put up, he was 15 for 24 from the floor last night. He had, he had 35 and 14, 61 fantasy points against Cat in a tough matchup in Minnesota. Then they go Minnesota to Denver. This is not an easy back-to-back for these guys, but I would say that his price has, has me like a little bit questioning it. I'm like, oh, he's you know, he's 7,200. Is it possible? Um, and then your long shot play would be uh, Landry Shamit for me uh, as value, but I, it's just a long shot play. Nothing special about it. Yeah, I'm not too worried about Booker shooting a shooter on a back to back because he didn't shoot it last night. You there know? you go. Exactly. It's just it's only free throws. Free throws. Free throw, I also free throw shooters. I can play. Um, I love nothing more than rostering the the, the 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 fantasy guys who shoot free throws. People are like, oh, but the guy's not even shooting the ball, and they just sort of fail to look at the free throw line, which is the most important thing. Yeah. This is the easiest, surest point. Well, they never miss. 
Yep. You look at this. He, oh, he missed three. How would he miss three? It's crazy. Yeah, it's nuts. Um, so, okay, so let's talk about Washington and, and, and Milwaukee here. Why don't you start off? Have, have you updated your projections yet? Uh, no, I haven't time okay. to do that. So I've updated my projections and and or the projections I'm looking at, and I am seeing. <laughs> okay. Well, so. let me start. Let me start with Washington. Okay. Because I want I want I wanted to 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 make kind of a joke. It wasn't a joke. It was the good thing about about the NBA as opposed to sports like baseball. See, baseball's coming up right now, right? And baseball, you could play guys like Mike Trout, and he'll go over four like three, you know, thirty three percent of the time, right? Thirty percent of the time, or whatever it is. And, 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 and baseball, you just can't predict, but NBA is like nice and consistent. Like you take Sadoransky, for example, like two games ago, he played 27 minutes. He was six for six, two for two from three, six assists and three rebounds and two steals for 33 fantasy points. So you figure the next game, it's gotta be somewhat projectable, 24 minutes, one for four, oh for two from three, three turnovers, two fouls, Three points and eight fantasy points. <laughs> yeah. So e even within the NBA, it's not life is not that easy. Um, right. But at thirty two hundred, um, I I'll, go, I'll I'll try that if I have to. You know what I mean? Might not have to, but uh, uh, we'll see what happens with Milwaukee. But I like that, and and I like um, you know, Rui. We were a little we were a little suspicious on the Rui uh, played the other day at what was he? But he was much cheaper. He was thirty two hundred. But he uh, he worked out uh, pretty nicely. He played 30 minutes for 20, you know, almost 30 fantasy points. They gave him a bump to 4,500. He's still looking to be a somewhat decent play. Mm -hmm. I'm getting some fishy. I, I call it fishy because I'm hoping you'll tell me it's either fishy or not. I'm getting some semi-fishy value uh, notice out of uh, Raul Natu and Corey Kisper. All those guys are approaching 6X as far as an early look. And then I would go right back to the discussion of whether we're, we're, we're at full go with, uh, with Kristoff. Um, you know, we got those 32 minutes that, you know, you know, we sort of half predicted, half hope he would get in his last game. Now he, now he got five blocks, which is not something you can, you could project out, but I don't know. I mean, again, so kind of a depleted Milwaukee team, uh, maybe he could have a really, really good game here. So I do like a couple of guys on the Washington side before we even talk about Milwaukee. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, definitely. They're going to stand out for the value. So the way I've got them rated is Avdia or Hachimura. I think you could play them together, but I just think that in terms of Avdia, Hachimura, Kispert are in one group, but Kispert being at the bottom of, end of that group for me, I just think the other guys have more upside. But I'm okay with that with Kispert as Kispert as well. I just I would go I, I would go Avdia. Uh, I would go Hachimura. Uh, no, I'd go Avdia, Hachimura, then Kispert. Um, but but again, Kispert is still still viable, and you could play those guys together. I just you know, maybe if there's rules to keep certain guys out of the same lineups, those would be the three, I guess. And then the other one would be Neto or uh, uh, Neto or Smith or or uh, Sadoransky. All of those guys are going to have an opportunity to have a game. It's it's very hard to predict game in and game out what what Washington's going to end up doing with their guards and who's going to end up actually performing and who's going to end up actually not playing minutes. Last you know, last time they played, Ish Smith was the one who was had all the projection, and he hasn't done anything in a while. But like, it does seem like just sort of like every other game, one of them is getting there. And the problem is that they they all sort of cut into each other. So one of those guys, with my favorite at the moment being Neto, um, with it's really close though between he and Sadoransky. But I, the problem is that the ownerships they're at, it feels like we maybe we should be fading that. However, one of them probably gets there, or you could play Ish Smith as the low owned one and just hope you get the minutes upside on your side that he plays well with the second unit, which always, I mean, he's always the, uh, a candidate for that. Um, KCP or Porzingis, I think are, are really, both really interesting. And I, I say, or, because I do think it's more likely that one of those guys cuts into each other from a usage standpoint, which sounds really weird to say about KCP. Um, but he's been in the 20% usage range. And I think one of he or, or Porzingis can do the scoring too. So I think Porzingis is the preferred one, but I would uh, I would mix in some some KCP. So that's how I've got that rated. I'll go back through my plays at the end of this. And then what do you have on the Brooklyn side? I'm sorry, on the Milwaukee side, because obviously Drew Holiday is going to look like the best play on the slate. Well, I mean, who's starting? I don't, is is Noir going to be? That's what we don't know yet. That's a good question, though. How about Brooke Lopez? I mean, like, is he ready to, you know, do stuff again? See, this would be the kind of situation where I would probably, like, I think, I mean, first of all, I played him a little bit the other night when they announced he was starting because I think they are trying to ramp him up. So, yes, he's he's totally viable. Do you think you really want to play him over guys with a higher ceiling? That's my issue. Um, 
the, the, I think that one of those uh, Washington guys has a higher ceiling. I think potentially the Indiana bigs have a higher ceiling. It's not like he's three K, but he's, he's, he's okay. What else, what else you got though? Sheets. I really don't know. Any, you know what I mean? I really didn't think I was going to be out. I, I'm just not prepared at all. I mean, okay. I mean you know, just wait and see. I mean, Drew Holiday is obviously going to be the best play on the slate. I imagine. Yeah. He's, uh, he's going to project to, he's pre, he might even project to be like, what is, what is he? Is he, is he, is he he's not 9k, right? I mean, 8K. Yeah, I think so, I mean, like, there's no yeah. Middleton. There's no, there's no Giannis. God forbid the game. And it's got to stay. I mean, it's not like they're getting blown up by anybody. I mean, right. He's, you got Drew Holiday at 36 minutes with 800,000% usage. I mean, like, how, how do you not play that? Yeah, I, I hear you. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I do like Holiday. Um, I think that he's going to be very hard to fade. But if you are going to fade him, you really should play like Grayson Allen and Bobby Portis or something because somebody's going to have to put up numbers. <laughs> like, they're going to they're gonna score points. You could play Jordan Wara. Um, I currently don't see a huge up. I think that they haven't updated the minutes quite right yet because – these numbers look very suspect to me. Um, I think they should all be projecting much, much higher. Uh, I think Bobby Portis is a really good tournament play. And uh, I mean, look, I understand that holidays that Lopez is back now. They can play those guys at the same time, especially with Giannis out. Um, and you're going to want some offense and Bobby Portis is never shy. So you take away Chris Middleton and, and Giannis and Bobby Portis to me should be a guy we really look at hard um, on both sides, but, but especially on FanDuel. Uh, the, uh, the value guys, I think that they do have enough of them to sort of eat into each other. The only issue is if Nwora gets minutes, if he gets like the start, you, you, you want to play Nwora. If he doesn't, I think he's a good long shot play, but it is a long, long shot play. Like we don't really have a great, you know, he played four minutes in the last game um, without Middleton even. So it's a little... A little nerve-wracking when you get to he, Connaughton, Grayson Allen, but that's the guys you'd be deciding between with some Brooke Lopez, I guess, Allen, Lopez, Connaughton, or Nwora. Um, and I think you want to try to, you know, try to play at least two Milwaukee guys just because without Giannis and Middleton, you've got to think the production goes somewhere. The problem is they're still going to play like 10 or 11 guys. So it's just hard. You're going to have to hope that your guy is the one who gets the extra run. And usually for me, when, when Giannis is in is when, great, when Connaughton tends to play better. But so I guess Grayson Allen might be my favorite of those value guys, but I don't even feel good about saying that. So I have it as Allen, Connaughton, Lopez, um, and then Nuora as my, as my others, but the main ones being Holiday and Portis for me. I would also say, by the way, for those game log watching a little bit, uh, as I mentioned yesterday, um, a good six, seven of uh, Connaughton's uh, fantasy points from his last game did come in garbage time. Um, just, uh, I was very happy to accept them, but just, uh, just, just to remind everybody. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, you start out, you can start a lineup with, with, with Booker and jo- Booker, Jokic and Drew Holiday, you know, at 4,200 left, I'm sure you can make it work. Um, if you want to do that and you get, you get correlation on the last game, you get Drew Holiday and then, you know, whatever um, you can, you can, you can, you can do some stuff. Yep. Absolutely. Um, it's just going to be a matter of maybe, maybe I might put that on the hashtag core plays on the, uh, on the, on the side. If I think there you go, there you there go. Um, yeah. And, and, and just a piece of uh, news guys will, will be, it'll be six fifteen tonight. Um, and I'll do oh, a lot of thirty start. Oh, that's right. Start. Yeah. Okay. So we'll be doing it from six fifteen to right around, uh, uh, seven. And so I, uh, I would like, I would like to, uh, if we're done, if we're, if we're done, I want yeah, to yeah, do your thing, do your thing. I want to shout out to somebody and, and you can, you can join me in this. I, 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 I want to s- listen. I, I'm not allowed to complain. He did well for me recently. Could have done a little better for me recently, but honestly, everybody all in conjunction F Paul Casey. I mean, honestly, yeah. I mean like just enough, not only do you drop out, but first you dump fantasy points of somebody before you drop out. I mean, he played one one hole I think against Corey Connors. And you know what? Corey, just take all the fans points. Yep. Take all the holes one. Actually, you didn't get the holes one, but you got the holes not played at least. And then I'm gonna drop out. Thanks a lot. So yeah, that's what that's what DFS is. You know, like I was really happy with him one day and now I'm at it. And that's what <laughs> that's what that's what make the sport work. Yeah, and 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 uh, you know, I, I 
the and by the way, my, my guy Neiman definitely didn't hold up his end of the bargain losing. No, no, but he but match. he could still win his two matches in advance. That's the thing. No, 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 no. I know, but he he nobody's ever done that before. It only happened once before in their whole match play history. He with the biggest loss ever. He he won zero holes and he lost eight and six. That's like impossible. <laughs> like in golf, like um, so that was kind of frustrating. But anyway, guys, um, my my just to real real quickly go through my my priorities. Uh, the, the it's it's on you know in, in not not in order but uh garland uh mccollum or book and or booker like these those are the three guys i like i like it in order probably probably a booker booker garland mccollum but i think they're all really close so i like all of those that group a lot um boucher birch or precious i think you want one of these guys I think you're likely going to want an Indiana big, depending on what they do on the back to back, because we've seen a lot of things out of them in that situation. I love Portis and Holiday, especially Holiday. He's going to be the chalk. Portis is maybe a pivot or maybe a guy you play along with Holiday in a game stack, because as we mentioned, there are plays on the other side. KCP or Porzingis with the with the edge going pretty largely to Porzingis and uh, Avdia Hachimura, and then as the, as the thinner value goes, you got the the Sato Neto Ish and Kispert. And I'm going to save those guys for the time being as a uh, fill in if I need them kind of a situation. Um, Sheets, anything else before we stop? Nope. Uh, you're gonna, you, you'll see an MMA video soon. You'll see all kinds of stuff coming up this weekend. And uh, um, got 6.15 NBA tonight. Uh, hockey, we're just we're doing as much as we can. And, and, and by the way, uh, uh, for those of you, Actually, very few people who listen to the NBA video or care about this, but uh, LOL is going to playoffs and DFS Chan, who I legitimately think is one of the best in the industry. I don't know everybody in this industry, but he's been providing some really, really good content for a sport, yep. which is which is deceptively difficult. You know, it's 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 just it's easy to pick pick guys, but it's really hard to get unique. And it's a very, very it's a difficult sport. And and uh, and he does a tremendous job with it. So if you're interested in that. Check out the free YouTube videos to get started and you can go subscribe and all that good stuff. All right. Sounds good. Well, good luck to everybody tonight and we'll see you at 6.15 Eastern. Yep.